Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to question number 42 of um, your SBR revision kit question 42 so this question is mostly on fair value that is your iPad is 13 fair value is one of the very important standard and make sure that you cover IFRS 13 why because IFRS 13 okay can come as a standalone question that means how do you measure fair value what are the methods used under a certain circumstances or it can come as a part of another standard because fair value if you see is 6 oh, sorry your is 16 ppe under that you might have to measure non-current asset using fair value right you have to for under revaluation model you might have to use fair value for financial instruments for your default there are so many uh, standard under which IFRS 13 you have to use okay because fair value to cal uh, measure fair value okay that's the reason IFRS 13 you, it can come as a standalone question it can come as a part of a question it can come even in your group accounting question that's why IFRS 13 there is no chance that you are going to miss this somewhere or the other this standard will come you cannot skip the standard okay so don't try to uh, omit the standard okay neglect the standard you cannot skip it no matter what it will come some way or the other it might come in question number one or two or three or four okay but it will come sometimes it comes more than one maybe in two different places but in two different cons uh, context okay so yeah but this uh, standard is not so long okay so it should not be so difficult for you and you have been given part a for part A, it's nine marks, and for part the second one, it is for six marks. Okay, and part B, if you see, that is a separate requirement, and you have your two professional marks here. Okay, so now let us read the requirements first. The first requirement is discuss the way for both the first and the second. Okay, discuss the way in which Meher and should fair value the above assets with reference to the principles of IFRS 13. These are regarding assets. Now, this asset could be any type of asset. It could be a financial asset. It could be tangible asset. It could be intangible asset. It could be a deferred tax asset. It could be your pension asset. It could be your uh, what else? It could be any type of asset. Okay, so for any type of asset, you should know how to uh, the principles of IFRS. But the principles of IFRS 13 is same. It's fixed. Okay, but the rule under specific standard, uh, which deals with fair value. Might, uh, might be different that's the only difference but otherwise the way you measure fair value on the IFRS 13 is same no matter what standard you are using it for so you have to know two things one uh, the particular standard uh, that is dealing with the asset and the rule of IFRS 13 you have to integrate and then answer this and the two issues are given to you the two issues are separate the marks are given first issue is nine marks second issue is six marks part b you have some numbers calculation is required okay uh, so explain to the investor see in section b okay so question number four you will get one question where you have to explain to the investor it is from the investor's perspective and this uh, topic i have covered in my lecture under analysis and interpretation there's a chapter in your sbr uh, textbook if you see if you are using the kaplan known as analysis and interpretation before the current issue this chapter it covers this thing okay so make sure that you go through this because one question you will get and usually this question comes in a it carries a heavy mark with it around 10 to 12 marks okay so better you have to go through that so explain to the investor the nature of accounting for provisions in financial statements in finance this is relating to provisions your answer should explain the benefit as well as the limitations so with the provision the way you account for provision you also have to explain benefits and limitations of the information provided in Mehran's disclosure note now she has given some disclosure and what are the benefits and the limitations of those information that is given for eight marks but two professional marks is the way you present okay how are you structuring it is it following a logical order and all those things so this you can answer in any order you can either start with part b or you can start with part a okay but I usually have a habit of going in the order because anyway, both needs to be done, right? This or that. 
so let's read and first few lines is always about the background so Marin is a public limited company known as a number of business sector including farming mining retailing that is uh, require advice on how to apply FRS 13 okay he's into farming he's into mining he's into retail that's important for nine marks so let's finish the first one Mehran is just quite a company which uh, compromise farming and mining business okay farming and mining are similar type of uh, this thing whereas retail is a separate uh, this thing so Mehran wishes advice on how to value uh, how to family some of the assets acquired okay this is okay no information is there one such asset is a piece of land which is currently used for farming the fair value of the land if used for farming is 5 million fair value of land is 5 million if it's used for farming if the land is used for farming purposes a tax rate of 0 0.1 million arises so first this paragraph is important the second one third man has determined the market participants would consider that the land would have an alternative use for residential purpose now looking at the market what the market participants is saying is that land could be used for alternative uses also other than farming for residential purpose for example right so the farewell of the land that are used for residential purpose before any cost is what land for residential purposes 7.4 million it's more than the land used for farming right in order this is before taking uh, into account any types of cost so in order to transform the land from farming to residential there would be a legal cost what is that legal cost to convert from uh, farming purpose to residential purpose 200,000 uh, viability analysis cost is 300,000 cost of demolition of the farming building is 100,000 that means to destroy the farming building so that you can use it for the purpose of residential so that destroying cost is 100,000 additionally permission for residential use see when you are transferring from farming to residential okay you need some kind of permission okay without that permission you cannot if you do it will be legal okay so you need permission also so the permission for residential use has not been formally given that permission is not given formally to you by the legal authority and because of this market participants have indicated the fair value of the land after the, taking the above cost would, dis, would would be discounted by 20 percent because of the risk see higher the risk lower will be your fair value because that risk is uh, included in the calculation of a fair value that's why fair value will go down okay of not obtaining planning permission what is that risk that you might not get the planning permission so if this risk is also taken into account discount the fair value of the land by 20 percent understand the scenario the scenario is a bit long but uh, it's for nine marks so yeah in addition Mehran has acquired a brand name now you do you see that this one first thing until here this is regarding one thing land okay in this it is okay you can annot it like this in case you will forget right land for farming this paragraph talks about land for farming this whole paragraph talks about land for residential purpose now you understood then we have another type of asset this is intangible asset they have acquired a brand name brand name is intangible is 38 associated with the produce from the farm okay so Mehran has decided to discontinue the brand on the assumption that it is similar to existing brand thinking that it is similar to the existing brand see Mehran is having some business he have acquired the farmland so with that they have associated a brand name also they think that that brand name they already have that brand so why not to discontinue the brand okay so Mehran is determined that if it ceases to use the brand then the indirect benefits will be 20 million if it continues to use the brand the direct benefit will be 17 million other companies in this market do not have brands that are as strong as Mehran's and so would not see any significant benefit from the discontinuation see because others they don't have that strong brand as Mehran they will feel that if you discontinue it will not have any significant benefit for them okay for nine marks and the requirement again I will take you back to the requirement again is how the fair value of the above assets the word says assets that means more than one asset nine marks they will simply not ask just for one asset remember 
there might be two three assets that you have to talk about how they are going to value that first okay so i please identify from the point from the case study how many points you are going to write if you identify that correctly writing part is nothing it's just like an icing on the cake identification is the tough part so first identify the type of what are the three type of assets if i ask you what are the three types of assets tell me there are three types of assets that i can extract from this the whole scenario after reading number one farmland farmland which standard you have to use this is like a plan on how to attack this answer is 41 agriculture second uh, residential land okay the standard which standard think okay i'm not going to answer that we'll see the answer later and third is your brand so there are three assets and this will be dealt under is 38 intangible asset so you see there are three type of assets from the first thing so let's so three into three maybe for three issues three marks you will get that's how you're going to get the nine marks okay that is my estimation you have to estimate it like this because in the exam in your setting you exactly don't know you cannot be 100 percent sure that this is only the way you're going to get marks but this is a reasonable thing okay reasonable thing for you to assume and you have to plan it like this your answer okay planning is the tool but don't waste so much of time this should automatically come to you this thing you should not start and think okay okay what is the answer by once you read you have to understand that these are the assets okay uh, in the answer i will take you to the marking scheme directly if you see one is a uh, non financial asset and fair value one mark per point okay they are non financial asset farm used for land for, uh, for residential purpose and the brand are they financial assets no they are non financial assets okay so to value non financial asset there is a different rule to measure financial asset there is a different thing okay now let us see the answer what you relating to the first part okay ifr is 13 and non financial asset see the subheading first land land is for both the sun that brand but since the question is not how the brand is calculated or how brand should be calculated the question is about fair value so you have to make the rule of ifr is 13 here okay so now let us start with this ifr is 13 and non financial asset how what does ifr is 13 says about non financial asset but because looking at this land and all you should identify what type of asset it is there should be something similar in all these three land for both this residential and uh, this one and brand that they are non financial asset that's why we are talking about non financial asset this is a press section and ifr is 13 that talks only about non financial asset that's the reason why first you have to talk about non financial asset and ifr is 13 What does ifr thirteen say about non-financial asset? Then apply those rule to land and brand. Immediately, don't start saying land is this, this, this. Because if you are missing out this thing, you are losing marks. Let's say three marks we are going to lose. Okay. So tutorial note, you can read it. It's for your understanding purpose. Immediately now attack the answer. Write in paragraphs like this. Even though it's one under one subheading, but when you are explaining your point, so first this is knowledge. This is your knowledge part. Nothing to apply to the case study now. Okay? How do you measure non-financial asset? The fair value of non-financial asset. So what does IFRS 13 says? Start with that. They require the fair value of non-financial asset to be measured. I will highlight it based on the highest and the best use. These are the two words that has to be there. because we are talking about non financial asset how do you measure fair value based on highest and the best use this word has to be there 
okay and this is determined from whom from the perspective of market participants entity does not decide what is the highest and the best use it is the market participants who says what is the highest and the best use second thing has to be there in your answer it does not matter whether the entity intends to use it okay very important point is the third one whether you use it for residential purpose or whether you use it for uh, for the farming purpose it does not matter whether the entity you uh, uh, intends to use the asset differently or not it does not matter whether you use it for farming purpose residential purpose commercial purpose, whatever the purpose is purpose is not the important thing in measuring fair value okay so second paragraph talks about what is this highest and best use first paragraph you are giving an introduction a rule that based on highest and best use market participants decide does not matter if assets are used for different purpose second now you are explaining highest and best use further in the second paragraph see how the whole answer is not put into one paragraph it was put if it was put under one paragraph things would be very difficult for the examiners also to understand when you when you put things into different paragraph no matter even if there are 10 paragraphs rather than putting all the 10 in one paragraph when you see there is a space when paragraphs are different it gives you some thing, time to pause and then uh, understand the scenario once you read the one paragraph. Okay, so that space, that line is very important. Writing a different paragraph is very important. It makes you understand better, things faster also. Second, as highest and the best use. So, this uh, you have to explain what is this highest and best use, otherwise, uh, how will you answer this question? Because these are not financial assets. Highest and best use takes into account the use of asset, which is that means when you're taking the use of asset, you have to see whether is it physically possible to use that asset in a certain way. For example, here we are talking about residential purpose. Is it physically possible that we can change the farm to uh, residential and use it? Is it legally permissible? Are you getting the legal permission? And is it financially feasible? Fi financially feasible to do so, taking into account the cost and all those things that's given to you, right? So here basically, what are you doing? You are giving the rule of IFRS 13 for non-financial asset before you apply to this case study. This is the pattern of answering any SBR questions. Okay, so through this, understand how other questions will be. Three things has to be there. I will highlight it. Highest and best use means physically possible, legally permissible, financially feasible. See, look at the word. Okay, if you want to memorize, it is P and it is P. P, P, physically possible. Here it is F, it is F, financially feasible, F, F. Except here it is L, P, legally possible. Okay. So P, P, L, P and F, F. Physically possible, legally permissible, financially feasible. These three things. So IFRS 13 allows management to presume that the current use of an asset. So what does IFRS 13 also says another thing. These are all the rules that you know about IFRS 13 related to non-financial asset and what is highest and best use only you are writing here. Understood. So don't go and say uh, stage one, level one, level two, level three inputs to beneficial fair value. That is not applicable. This is not financial asset. Understood. That's the reason that you know the knowledge. Yes, it's there. It's correct. There are three levels of measuring fair value, but that's not applicable to this case study. You cannot put it here. Because here it is about non-financial asset. That's why it's very important for you to first correctly identify what type of asset it is. Just looking at the word asset, don't think, okay, it's all are same. So IFRS 13 allows the management to presume the current use of the asset is only the highest and the best use. That's what no, that's what is the normal presumption. For under IFRS 13, you always have to assume, okay, it's a pre-assumption that the current use of the asset is the highest and the best use unless the factors suggest otherwise unless there are other factors that comes into account that says no this is not the highest and the best use okay that's the norm that means what is the current use in this case we'll see now in the answer so now after this everything you have covered that you need to answer your land and brand now apply this to the land under land as a separate subheading and here also you will see the answer is in many different paragraph to, to say uh, maybe this answer comes in four different paragraphs. Okay. Immediately talk about what? Land is first used for farming. 
okay so if the land zone for agricultural use is currently used for farming let's talk about that first before going to residential thing and all because answer the way your case study is given to you presented to you it's easy for you that way so first the land is used for farming then the fair value should reflect the cost structure to continue operating the land for farming that means if there are any cost in operating it as a farming it should include that fair value should reflect that cost you should take that into account if you are continuing to operate the land for farming that means including any tax credit tax credit also has to be included in that fair value fair value of the land that is used for farming only don't think about residential use now we are only into farming now currently include any asset which could be realized by market participants now calculate numbers are given after discussion you always have to calculate so calculate the correct fair value of the land that's what you are supposed to do it was not given now you include calculate so tell the fair value of the land if you saw farming would be this much 5.1 million how it is shown here 5 million is already given the fair value of land and this 0.1 is the tax credit added it should be taken into account they told now what is the next so next the, this is the first paragraph what is it fair value of land correct fair value of land i would or should i say adjusted fair value of land adjust the figure that is given to you don't take everything in the face value that whatever they have given only i will put here and that's correct no there there's a reason why numbers are given to you you have to do some adjustment so adjusted fair value of land for farming the first paragraph is that and one mark is for this you will get first 3 marks you will get from here above 3 okay to say that it is a non financial asset to say that it is in the highest and the best use and to define highest and the best use so this 3 marks you will get from here only one mark to identify non financial asset again i am repeating second for highest and best use and third is what is this highest and best use physically possible legally permissible financial feasible coming to the land one mark you will get here one mark Now let us go to the second paragraph. What is the second paragraph about? Usually, you have to now define what you are changing from land from farming to residential purpose. So include that in your second paragraph. So agricultural land appears to have an alternative use because they considered that market participants consider that this could be used for residential purposes also. So use of an asset need not be. legal at the measurement date that means for residential purpose this might not be legal at the measurement date but it must not be legally prohibited in jurisdiction it should be something that should not be legally prohibited there are something that you have not got a legal permission right now maybe later you will get and there are some things which are legally prohibited for that you will never get permission but this use of land maybe at the measurement date it is not legal maybe at that date you didn't get the permission but that does not mean that it is legally prohibited in the jurisdiction you will get okay it's not banned so it if it's legally prohibited then that cannot be the highest and the best use because what did we say here highest and the best use means it has to be physically possible legally permissible financially feasible so it has to be legally permissible also permi uh, permissible So in this case, see legally permissible means what? It does not mean that at the measurement date, if you are not getting permission from the government, does not mean it's not legally permissible. But if it's legally prohibited, then you can say it's legally not permissible. That's why it cannot be the highest and the best use. That 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 use of asset. Why are we talking about legally prohibited? see here you don't have to repeat the same things in the answer this is what i wanted to show you how to apply your knowledge knowledge part is this okay i will use a different color this is your knowledge part in the black i have circled it this is your knowledge part you have talked about three physically possible uh, possible legally permissible financially feasible we are not talking about physically possible or financially feasible in terms of residential we are only focused about this legally permissible why because in the case study you have they have been talking about getting permission from the government getting permission legal permission so all this only you are applying here you see from the case, knowledge is this much out of knowledge only one person you are applying in your answer that is applicable so we are not saying residential purposes uh, physically possible legally permissible financially feasible therefore that is the highest and best no that's not how you answer 
So this must not be legally prohibited in the jurisdiction. Now we are coming for residential. So here you will get okay what one mark another one mark you will get here we'll read it this is for residential purpose i i fair value of residential so if used for the residential purpose the value should include all cost right all cost should be taken into account we're changing the land to the market price return in addition demolition and other costs when preparing the land for different use should be included in the valuation okay so this cost should include the uncertainty related whether the approval when you are taking this cost it should also include what uncertainty what is that uncertainty whether you will get the approval or not that also it has to be there okay because this normally this uncertainty you have to take when when you are valuing a price of a land okay or value of a land and it, that land can have a different use. During this condition, you have to f take that uncertainty also into your calculation of a value. Risk, that means you have to discount that because of risk. If the land only has one use, then there is no risk. No risk. No uncertainty. When this case, there's uncertainty because farming land can be used for residential purpose. You can convert it or you might not convert it, depending on whether you get the permission or not. So the fair value now calculate see the, the the structure how they always explain first and then they calculate because if they do the other way around it becomes very difficult why they have done a particular calculation now when you calculate you know okay so fair value of the land for a fair value of the land for the residential purpose is this much 5.44 million if you compare this with this this was 5.1 million but this is 5.44 it's more how they got 7.4 already they have given before taking into cost the fair value of land for residential is 7.4 from that you deduct what three type of cost you deduct and you discount 80 percent you have to discount it why you're discounting it you are explaining also because there's an uncertainty that they will have a different use it's a risk 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.1 the three costs you are deducting we'll see what are the three costs 0 0.2 okay you are taking in terms of this is 0 0.7.4 million means this you have to take this will come as 0 0.2 million okay that's why you're taking 0 0.2 or you can take the whole number and then deduct also seven point that means seven four hundred thousand and then minus two hundred thousand also this is also okay so this legal cost deduct viability cost deduct cost of demoliation deduct three cost deduct and discount from seven point four and five get the this thing now So one mark for that, for farming, one mark for residential, another one mark you will get in the last paragraph. What is that one mark? To find the highest and the best use. What, which For which purpose is, is it the highest and the best use? Is it for residential or farming? One mark for this. So in this situation, the presumption that the current use is the highest and the best of the land has overridden the market factor. Overridden means it's not correct. Market factor is different from the presumption. That is the meaning of overridden. What was the presumption? Current use is the highest and the best use. So, which indicate what is the current use? You are using it for farming purpose. You cannot say current use is uh, current use is residential. See, still you are not using it for the residential purpose. This is just a plan that you are planning to shift to residential purpose, and this are some cost and some uh, drawbacks. Sorry, some um, cost saving or whatever it is. Some fair value is given and some cost is given. But current use is your farming only. So is that is farming the highest and the best use or not that you have to write here after doing the calculation because for that you have to find the two fair values first remember fair value of farming land for farming and residential purpose after that compare which of these two is the highest whichever is the highest that is the highest and the best use sometimes your presumption might be correct that means current use is farming so farming is higher in that case okay presumption works but most of the some of the time it might be not correct maybe this is higher your current use is not the higher the other use is higher the alternative use is higher like in this case so which indicates the residential development is the highest and the best use in this case it's not the farming it's the residential development how therefore the, the so because this is the highest and the best use then what is the fair value of the land 5.44 million the one which you have got for the residential purpose just now this 5.44 million why 
because this is 5.44 million and the one used for agriculture sorry the farming is what 5.1 million is lower compare the two fair values whichever is higher is the fair value of the land because that is the highest and the best use understood this is how it works so for one who have not covered my lecture who have never went through fair value it's okay don't worry you still can understand the concept of fair value through the questions that i do okay there is always a way there is always a way if you want to learn things okay so keep positive hope and don't give up even though it's few days left for your exam through questions like this also you can understand how it works because it will be similar for any other question so understood okay that's it so understand how the marks are given to you now you will get the nine marks three from here three from here okay maybe here you will get more marks for the land that's how you're going to get the nine mark okay no sorry uh six marks so six marks you have already covered now the remaining three marks you will get from the brand that's how you're going to get the nine marks always count your marks okay for how many marks you're writing mm. so now coming to brand brand is easier less things are there because there they had it had different uses and it's a non-financial asset that's why we had more to write brand is easier okay but still brand also highest and best use only why because it's not financial asset so in the absence of any evidence to the contrary they should value the brand on the basis of the highest and the best use by the market party even if man intends it for a different use it will go by the highest and the best use for the brand okay so to say this one mark you will get here first paragraph second that means they should not discontinue the brand why because their existing brands are less strong this is you are relating to the case study from the facts what they should do they should not discontinue the brand because it's less strong instead market participants would continue to use the brand in order to obtain the direct benefit because when you're using the brand you will get the direct benefit otherwise those benefits you will lose and you cannot afford to lose those uh, value direct benefit because your brand is not strong so another one mark is here okay so whether you continue the brand or discontinue the brand it does not matter when it comes to value of fair value of brand that will still go by highest and best use only understood third finally i told you calculate discuss discuss calculate discuss discuss calculate discuss discuss calculate nine months so their decision to discontinue the brand is therefore not relevant in determining fair value when you are determining fair value whether you discontinue the brand or not does not matter so what is the fair value as such the fair value of the brand is 17 million okay for this i will go a little bit uh, more under the brand for brand okay what did they told they told that if they cease to use the brand indirect benefit will be 20 but direct will be 17 okay so in this case it looks more likely that they might not discontinue the profit why you are saying 17 you might again ask me this question that just now i told you you use the highest figure for land highest and the best use but here if you see 20 is higher than 17 then why are they using the brand the, the, the reason is see even though they have given you the figure they have given you one more point that helps you to decide whether they will choose to continue the brand or cease other companies in the market do not have brand that are as strong as Meharan. So they would they will not see any significant benefit from discontinuation. This makes you more likely that you are not going to discontinue. Hence, you are going to use the brand. Because you are going to get the direct benefit. So because of that, what is it? Fair value 17 million. Understood? These things are a little bit uh, tricky, right? It's not easy to understand when you read it first. Okay. So even if you discontinue or not, the fair value of the brand is 17 million only. Okay. Just.
So already the fair value is given 17 million for the brand. This fair value only you can take 17 million, even though you seize and you don't have to take that into account. So that one. Now, IFRS 13 and financial asset because second thing is relating to financial asset, but we didn't read the scenario. When it comes to financial asset, things are different. Financial asset means what? You have to refer your IFRS 9. Okay, the rule from your IFRS. See, some of these rules you will get from IFRS 9. Okay, not. Meharan owns a NCI in Haram, a private equity company and wishes to fair value it at the financial year end. Meharan acquired an ordinary share interest on 1st of April 2004 during the issue. Current financial year, they issued further equity due to the use of, uh, issue of preferred share to venture capital fund as well as the preferred share that venture found fund now holds a controlling interest and the terms of the preferred share including the voting rights are similar to those of the ordinary shares. Preferred share includes voting rights similar to those of ordinary shares except that the preferred share have a cumulative fixed dividend entitlement for every four years and a preferred shares rank ahead of the ordinary share upon the liquidation. The transaction of this one is 15 per share. They wish to know that the factor that should be taken into account to mention the value of the holding their ordinary shares using a market-based approach. This is a financial asset. When you're having shares in a company, okay, it's a financial asset, remember that. And you, the way you measure fair value is not the same as the previous one. This is a good question, in fact, to cover all the knowledge of IFRS 13. Okay, this, the next one is six marks. How do you start this? This is also very similar to your first one in terms of starting. Start with IFRS 30. Start with the knowledge. What is required when it comes to measuring financial asset? Okay. They already the tutorial note is saying this part of the question can be answered using common sense. For example, how do ordinary share differ from preferred share? And what impact this will have on the difference on the fair value? So IFRS 13 states that the fair value is a market-based measurement. Although it acknowledges that observable market transactions might not be available. Okay. What happens? It is a market based fair value. It's based on market. Even though some observable market transactions might not be available, but still it is a market based measurement only. Whether or not this observable information is there or not. So the aim of the IFRS 13 is what? To estimate the price at which an asset would be sold at an ordinary transaction in market price measurement day. At what price you have, you will receive when you sell the asset in the open market. That is the meaning. That is the definition. So financial asset is normally like any asset. The normal thing of IFRS 13. How do you measure? It's a market based. Okay. So just for saying it's market based and all one mark. Then second, what is it? So the market approach takes a transaction price paid for identical or similar instruments. What are, what are we exactly saying here? I will tell you what is it. You are referring to these three steps now. You see, this was not required in earlier one because for earlier one, there's a separate section on non-financial asset. Go through your IFRS 13, I've covered it. But other than those which are non-financial, that means they are financial asset for them, you follow this three level, level one, level two, level three. That's why we told is a market based. It does not matter observable input, all those things first. And now we are going to refer this You're starting with level one, whether we have level one information. If yes, use it. If not, go to level two. Whether we have level two information. If yes, use it. If not, go to level three. Level three, you should be able to use it. You cannot say level three is also not there. Hence, I will not measure it only if fair value. You can't say that. Even though level three is not very preferred, it's most riskiest. Level one is always preferred. And level 2 is preferred over level 3, but we'll see. That's why now they're starting from level 1. So the meaning of identical or similar means what? What is it? They're referring to the level. Which level does it fall to? What? Which level does it fall to? Identical or a similar instrument? It's level two, right? According to me, it's level two. It's not according to me. I mean, it's level two. Because if it's level one, means exactly you will get the price as it is from the market and take it. If you have to do some kind of adjustment or something, it is level two. Okay. And level three, where no information is given, you have to focus 
using your cash flow forecast and all those things but level 3 you don't have to do here because for shares and all prices will be there so the market approach takes a transaction price paid for an identical or a similar instrument and adjust it what is the price for the similar uh, uh, the preferred share or ordinary share and then you adjust it so using a market approach they could take the transaction price for the preferred share and adjust it to reflect the certain differences between the preferred share and ordinary share see whatever the price is given for the preferred share take it and adjust that price why because there are some differences between fair shares and order preference and ordinary share you have to adjust it okay so now these are given in bullet points i have always told you don't write in bullet points but writing like this it will not cause you a lot of uh, problem why because this is not you know writing in bullet points bullet points means writing in one or two words the whole answer not even writing in paragraphs no this they are writing that under this these are examples to show that these are the examples rather than writing in four separate paragraphs you will not understand then if it looks like this if you are putting it here as for different paragraphs it looks a bit difficult for you so whenever you want to highlight some differences that this comes under this from the rest of your answer you can write like this okay or you can put a tab button and put some space like for example you are writing like this and then you start from here to show that this comes under this if you start from here here you don't know whether this one is under this or not you see no connection is there now clearly i know that these are the four examples of why it will be a different preferred share and ordinary share will be different so these are the four differences these are the techniques you need to know when you are typing okay so this is not known as bullet points okay this is acceptable in fact this prefer that you write your answer also like this you can even write 1 2 3 4 also or you can write in bullet points okay so so let's say uh four marks you will get from here right so 1 plus 4 5 and another one mark so that's how you're going to get your six marks because one mark for each understood so first one there would be an there would be an adjustment to reflect the priority of the preferred share upon liquidation why there will be an adjustment remember in terms of liquidation preference shareholders are paid first before your ordinary shareholders so to reflect that priority you have to do an adjustment that's the one difference second difference this is very common if you know the difference between preferred share and ordinary share remember this answer should be very different uh, easy for you okay it's not that you are using just because you saw the word uh, financial asset don't panic thinking oh my god financial ifrs 9 came how do i know even though ifrs 9 yes financial asset is under ifrs 9 but look at the nature of the question they are talking about differences of preferred shares and ordinary share so your answer has to be talking about those things understood second they should acknowledge the benefit that is associated with control that means this adjustment related to the fact that their individual ordinary share represents the nci where is the preferred share issue reflected controlling interest ordinary share represents nci preferred share issues controlling interest third there will be an adjustment for the lack of liquidity of the investment which reflects the less ability of the ordinary share to initiate a sale of a ham related to preferred share holder what does it mean what does it mean when you want to sell a uh, air home okay the ordinary shareholder okay they have less ability to do that but preferred shareholder they can easily sell that is known as lack of liquidity from the point of ordinary shareholder they don't have that much of liquidity compared to preferred shareholder preferred shareholder easily they can sell and receive cash hence they are more liquid but ordinary shareholders they cannot do that so that adjustment has to be there done that's a second third difference fourth there will be an adjustments for the don't forget the cumulative dividend part for cumulative dividend part there is an adjustment this this comes for preferred shares it does not come for ordinary shares so this how are you going to calculate this it will be calculated as the present value of expected future dividend received on the preferred share cumulative dividend for 4 years no so today you want to find the value so find the present value of the future dividend expected future dividend that you have been to receive 
less the present value of any expected dividend receipt on the ordinary share. Okay, so deduct that from the present value of expected dividend receipt from the ordinary share. So the four differences there. That's why you have to adjust. Now, you see, the moment you finish this, again you are coming back to this way of answering. This is a different paragraph. This is not an example. This shows you to understand. Anyone seeing this, they will know there are only four examples because four bullet points. Again, then it's a continuation. Okay, so you should review these things. The circumstances of the issue of the preference share to ensure that its price was a valid benchmark. In addition, Meharan should consider whether there have been any changes in the market condition between the issue of the preference share and the measurement date. If there is any changes, you should take that into account in measuring the fair value of the preferred shares and all those things. Okay. So you should always see the circumstance of the preferred share, whether it's valid to still take that, uh, whatever the price you have taken from the market as a benchmark to measure your preferred share because circumstance might change also. So these things you will get additional marks okay to, for saying something that is going to happen in the future you should do like this so one mark now we are coming to part b accounting for provision okay so for accounting for provision we are over with this part a is over now part b because the question again see discuss the way in which they have, should measure the family of the above assets Okay, so the second is financial asset. How they should measure. So fair value also when you are taking any adjustments in the market, automatically you have to adjust the fair value also. Understood? That's why we are referring to this uh, market condition and everything, circumstances. Now part B is one whole question only, not separate questions. Okay, so here we have to talk about provision, accounting for provision as well as the benefits and limitations of the information that is given in the disclosure note professional marks you are going to get here so here you have to pay uh, more attention right and has recognized provisions and had and it has produced the following provision disclosure note is also given okay customary fund the organizations and total now what is it small disclosure note provision for customer refund We'll keep the figure and then we'll read. Keep the figures in front of you and then read disclosure note. If you read it like this, things become easier rather than if you put like this and try to read. You have to scroll up and down, up and down. It wastes time. You are reading somewhere again. You have to go up, find the number. Okay. So provision for customer refunds. Where is it? Here, first column. Reflect the customer's expected liability for returns of goods sold in retail store. Okay. Based on experience of rates of return, based on experience, past experience, provisions for reorganizations, reflect restructuring and redundancy cost, principal in relation to our retail operation as well as restructuring and finance and IT. So they are taking, first of all, in the retail operation, the uh, restructuring and redundancy cost as well as in the finance and IT also. The directors of Meharan has been asked by an investor to explain the accounting for financial statements and explain why the some of the information provided the financial discussion is useful. This thing is repeated in the requirement also. Okay. How are you going to answer this? Looks like very open ended, and some of you might think like this. To get the 10 marks, what 8 marks, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick one by one like this and answer one line by line. No, it's not what you are required to do. Because numbers are, everyone can see the number. If you just explain, it will be same only. That this is 10.2 after reorganization, it changed like this. No. How are you going to answer this? Start with the broad topic accounting for provision. For this, you will get few marks. Remember, it's for eight marks, but with this, benefits and limitations are also there. Don't forget those. And then we have benefits and limitations separate. So if you see this answer, okay out of eight marks okay out of eight marks provision accounting three marks benefits and limitations five marks definitely because it has two things benefits and limitations that's why this is five marks and this is three marks one mark per point that means one mark for provision accounting and benefits and limitations you have to give total five with benefit and limitations it could be maybe three benefits or two limitations or two benefits or three limitations okay it could be anyway 
equal means it will not uh, equal means equal does not mean that you will write 2.5 benefits come on does not make sense how can you write 2.5 benefits and 2.5 limitations to make it fine make you should it should be a whole number no you cannot write two benefit and a half come on and the two professional marks so if you see the answer it will be quite long okay because professional mark does not mean you are writing two additional points and getting marks this is the way you present your answer and how strong your arguments are especially the marks will come in your benefit and limitation part how much you can think how broad can you think because uh, provision for uh, provision part accounting for provision is done according to a standard so that you will get normal marks mostly that's what i think okay that's why how i used to think and then i answer benefits and limitations yes here variety of answers can come so here you can get the two professional marks okay so first we'll finish the accounting part okay so this should be easy easy for you because you know the rules of is 37 another standard after ifrs 13 just now i've covered is 30, 37 this is another very important standard somewhere or the other you will get this also so make sure that this standard needs to be covered okay 100% you are going to get this standard in your every setting of SBR this standard comes it appears the reason is because this is the area where even the auditors find it the greatest risk provisions okay fraud can be found in this area easily it could be manipulated that's the reason this is mostly like uh, most likely to be tested provision is 37 even from the auditing perspective also this is an area standard which needs to be heavily uh, checked thoroughly so uh, provisions are defined okay what is the meaning of provision start with the definition because you have to see before when they say account for this provision how do you account for provision how do you account for non uh, intangible asset whenever they say this first define what the what that provision means and then you will talk about accounting so one mark for that provision part so provision is defined according to a standard mention the name of the standard you don't have to uh, write this all those things what is the full uh, name of the standard this is not required because if you are writing all this it will waste a lot of time so if you just write provisions are according to is 37 provisions are defined as blah 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 that's enough you will get the full marks but if you want to write this also it's okay normally i avoid writing the full name because you know so many things to type provision comma contingent provision, comma and contingent asset i don't write i just write the name of the standard okay in case you forgot the number don't worry then you can write according to a uh, standard for provision contingent libraries and contingent asset or you can say according to the standard for provision this is how it is defined in case you forgot the number that it is 37 and what happens in case you forgot the number 37 and you wrote 36 then remember you are going to call trouble for yourself because is 36 is a different standard it's impairment so you cannot say according to is 36 and then give the rules even though the rules are correct but it is according to is 37 not is 36 understood so don't take a chance don't take that risk of writing incorrect numbers in case you forgot the number because it happens usually very less it happens it does not happen so much but there are chances that you might miss up the two standard the numbers 35 30, sorry 36 37 these are nearby numbers then we have 38 right so don't and sometimes you might write a number which even don't exist for example is 39 there is no standard uh, name as is 39 so if you do it that way also it's a problem if you have if you are uh, mentioning some other standard with incorrect number that is also issue problem so unless 100 percent sure about the number don't put the number but once you remember the number best thing is no need to write the full name just write the number is 37 that's enough okay but if you want to write the name the provision condition level and condition asset and the number that also you can write no harm these are just i'm telling you some time management the, the, wherever you can save time i always hint that this area you can avoid this area you can write it this way okay so provisions are defined in is 37 as what as liabilities when the timing as well as the amount of the future outflow is uncertain when you don't know at what time and the amount that you have to pay it's something in the future you have to pay so cash is going out it's an outflow okay it will be recorded as a liability today it's a liable you are liable for it you have an obligation but you don't know the amount 
you don't know the time also when you have to pay in the future something uncertain if, so this if these things are there provision this is the definition of provision after you defined okay after you define what as you remember three marks you are going going to get for provision one mark for that definition what about the other so a provision is recognized if all of the following criteria are met don't forget this three criteria another one mark you are going to get from here to say the three uh, to say the three criteria already in the, your definition it's there okay what are the criteria criteria is you can put like this in bullet points or you can put numbers also one two three it's okay obligation from past event outflow maybe of cash you have to pay in cash to settle the obligation there's a it's probable probability is there's not remote you have a higher chance of paying something for example if for a court case you have an 80 percent chance of losing the case hence you have to pay okay it's an outflow and outflow of economic resource can be measured reliably okay reliably you can measure the cost the expense if the three conditions are satisfied you recognize a provision and another one mark one mark here one mark here one mark here So provision should be measured at the best estimate of the economic resource required to settle the obligation. What is your best estimate? Okay. They should be re-measured at each reporting date using the best available information. Provision is not something that you measure today and you keep it same only forever. It's no. Every year at the reporting date, at each reporting date, that means end of your financial year, you have to re-measure that provision using your best available information whatever the information you have why best available information you might not have all the information that is needed but whatever you have okay using that available information you have to best you have to utilize it and remeasure it you cannot say i don't have the available information at this date so i will wait a little more longer and then i will wait and then i will adjust and remeasure no you cannot say Whatever the information you have, even if you have 80% of the information with which you can measure, you have to measure, re-measure. Okay. Because this we are talking about accounting for provision for investor. Investors need to know this. How you are recognizing provision and when you recognize provision, how you have to re-measure them at the reporting date. Okay. So if the time will have the money is material. Here we are not saying that provision, how provision will you recognize provision like this and uh, this is how be, use, ben, uh, investors are going to benefit. No, read the requirement again. Explain to the investor the nature of accounting for provision. What is uh, how nature of accounting for provision as it is you explain to the investor and then you have benefits and limitations. So the nature of provision is this only. Then if the time value of money is material, provision should be discounted to present value. If time value, why provision should be discounted to present value? Provision is something that you have to pay in the future, but today you have to estimate about the future. That's why you have, that means you have to find the present value of the future cost today. So if the time value of material is material, then you have to discount to the present value. If it's material, if okay, if it's not, then you don't have to discount. Okay, the the discount rate. So basically, all everything. How you recognize provision measure provision only you are writing here the so discount rate used should reflect risk specific to the liability that means for example a court case you're having a court case what is the risk that you have to pay to your uh, the claim is not going to be successful and you will be like you are going to lose the case you have an 80 percent chance that you're going to lose the case that means you have to pay now that risk has to be uh, taken into account for that discount rate discount rate should not be an average discount rate of the discount rate that is used for other liabilities no it should be specific to that liability for which you are recognizing the provision that discount rate you have to use because that discount rate it should reflect the risk if there's specific risk that discount rate should be reply how if you have a chance that you are going to lose a case court case discount rate will be higher if you have a chance of winning the case discount rate will be lower because risk is lower okay that discount rate you need right to find the present value and all so yes you have to talk about the discount rate 
so up until this much it must be easier for you because it's just the reputation of IS 37 coming to the benefits and limitation this is something new new in a sense of specific to the case study and here you can get your two professional marks also okay why two professional marks because something beyond our knowledge you have to write here imagine you are an investor I'm telling you this to you. I'm not reading this for you. I'm not reading this sentence, but I'm telling this to you now. I'm instructing you now to do that. Imagine you are an investor. The ones who are now seeing my video. What useful information about the future cash flow and risk can you get from the disclosure? You always need to ask this question from yourself. What is the information do I need? What else do I need to know? What more do I need to know? Do I have all the relevant information to take a decision? If yes, if it's yes for you, then it will be yes for them only because every investor thinks in the same way. If it's no, then they also will not be satisfied. That means more information is required and you have to tell them. What are the information you need about future cash flow? About future cash flow, definitely. And the risk also you want to know. From the disclosure, when someone is giving a disclosure from that, what do you want to know? What is the future cash flow? Because this talks about the profitability of that investment. Second, the risk attached to it. If risk is low, if you can understand that risk is low from the disclosure, you will go for it. Otherwise, no. That means disclosure has to be good enough for you to take that decision. What other information would you like to know? Ask this question. You, If you ask this question from yourself, some answer you will be getting. Those answer only will be the answer that you need to write. So five marks from benefits and limitations. Okay. Don't write uh, answers like this. One, two, three. Drawbacks or limitations. One, two, three. Don't write answers like this. If you're writing like this, yes, technical marks you will get. It's correct. But you will lose out the professional marks. You will not, you are not going to get the two professional marks. They will not give you minus number. Like they will they are not going to cut your marks, but they are not going to give you marks also. Hence, you have to write like proper sentence and in paragraphs. How many pairs? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. It's worth it. Maybe 5 marks and with 2 professional marks, 2 more. So, yeah. Involves uncertainty. Profession involves uncertainty. That means disclosure should give them inform important information to help them know what the nature of obligation, the timing of an outflow. Okay. Uncertainty is about the amount over the time involved and any major assumptions you have made. You always want to know the assumptions also. Okay. Now, open your disclosure note. From here, what can you see? What is, what is charge to profit and loss? Utilize. 31st March 2006 and current and non-current has been given. This you have to write in your answer now. Okay. So if, if you ask me. Maybe here you can get one professional mark. For this. Why? To recognize that provision involves uncertainty and what type of disclosure will be important relating to provision. This, this is not the benefit and the limitation. This ask, answers your question that what other information would you like? This is a kind of information that you need to know. The amount, the timing, the assumption that you have made when it comes to provision. Because in provision, you have to make assumptions. Now, we are linking this to the disclosure note split. One by one, we can talk whether it's beneficial or not or limitation so the disclosure note splits the provision between current and non-current just now we checked right how this will be beneficial it will help users of the financial statement don't sit and explain what is this current and non-current liabilities everyone knows it you just have to tell how it is useful to the user the splitting of provision in current and non-current liabilities so this helps users of financial statements to assess the timing of the cash outflow understood when this is there you can understand whether it is within 12 months or more than 12 months if it's within 12 months it's current more than 12 months non-current liability this helps you to plan your cash flow you can plan you can make a budget 
so this help assess the timing of cash flow forecast and the potential impact also on the overall net cash inflow okay one 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 drawback one benefit is this one benefit one benefit give yourself one mark it would also be useful to provide further information about it would be useful to provide further information it's not there you can always suggest for better uh, information so it would be useful to provide further information about what about the expected timing of the outflow classified as non current liability yes under non current liability it's more than 12 months but it's better if they can write the expected timing also for example whether it is in one year two year three year or what which they didn't currently tell okay so something like this also you can include in your answer is always good to include like this because two professional marks are there okay so if you suggest something like this you are going to get the two professional marks okay i cannot exactly pinpoint and tell you that this is where only you are going to get the professional marks it is spread out throughout out your whole answer because one is for the format that you are doing the other one is the the points that you are coming up with which is more than required from you for example this one to say that uh, it's better to provide this information also this information also that is missing something which is there it's easy for you to write okay the benefit is this something which is not there is hard for you to think and come up with solutions like this that better to include this information also that's why two professional marks they give in this type of questions analysis and interpretation you know that thing here a lot hmm understood one benefit for that now what else another issue was that they focused on past event financial reporting so but provision disclosure they also provide info but they also provide information about future what happens normally you are giving a limitations of financial reporting limitation is that they focus on past event but when you are disclosing about provision they provide important information about future provision is something to do with future not past so this disclosure note informs investors about what another benefit second benefit informs see each benefit will be in each different paragraph and drawbacks will be in a separate paragraph that's why you will see there are so many paragraphs here that's the reason you have to divide it like this don't write th uh, three four uh, benefits in one paragraph it's not a not a good technique when you are reading also is very difficult because you don't know where your first benefit uh, ends and where does your second benefit starts from it's hard to identify but because now it's in different paragraph easily i can identify so this disclosure note informs investors about what restructuring activity within the stores but also in finance and it also which is good right because provision also has restructuring activities into that so what is the restructuring activities within the store as well as the finance and it clearly they have told in the disclosure note so this helps them the in investors will be informed about this while this restructuring will incur cost investors may value their effort to streamline its operations and improve efficiency even though this restructuring has cost but what would investors value their effort to streamline its operation and improve efficiency maybe few professional marks you might get from this point also wherever you can add in each benefit under each benefit or drawback try to add more points so that you can collect professional marks i'm not saying exactly uh, that under every line you have to write one or two points more but wherever you can you think that uh, this is best for the scenario you what else then so two benefit is covered maybe i i i guess this are drawbacks the three drawbacks that's how you get the five pass but anyway we'll see the disclosure shows that provision as a total balance increase year on year we'll see first line should tell what's happening the this thing total provision where is the total provision you see total increasing year on year if you see from here it has increased to 22.8 analysis is mostly like this they will give you some figure or something you have to analyze and come up with answers so 
total increased year on year first tell what is happening referring the case study then talk about how it will be advantage or how it will be a disadvantage okay total uh, the balance increase year on year so liability is always entail risk because there's an obligation to make payment to sell obligation when the company has insufficient even if you have insufficient amount you have to pay liabilities okay you have that obligation so that's why provision might be viewed as particularly risky provision is the risk area because they are estimated number one no objective figure and therefore actual cash outflow required might be significantly higher than estimated it's a risk now one risk or limitations even if you see total balance also increase year from year but that's just an estimate but actual amount will be higher than that understood looking at what the disclosure so some esteem uh, investors may be deterred from investing in companies with substantial provisions the risk is that they will not want to invest in companies with substantial provision because it's risky one risk one paragraph second okay and don't uh, another thing i want to tell you don't uh, have this habit of writing one benefit two drawbacks again one benefit just because uh, maybe suddenly you might think about uh, think of another benefit right after writing about two drawbacks don't write it like this this is not a good way of writing avoid it's a wrong strategy rather what could you do now because you are doing it on a cv platform things become very easier i told no cut and uh, paste you don't have to cut every time and write a new line waste time what you can do is imagine after one benefit you are not getting any more benefit you got the two drawbacks type the two drawbacks no worry on a cv platform no so go back here just press uh space 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 some space make some space and then you can write the second benefit right after the first benefit okay understood right after the sec uh, uh, first benefit or in the first because you can press right always enter 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 and go down you can make space easily rather than cutting and thing make space right after that so it should be like this benefit number one in first paragraph benefit number two benefit number three if there are three we don't know how many then start with the drawback then it will be all drawback 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 finally conclusion or anything if you have to give okay if it's required otherwise leave this is the method that you have to follow this is profession okay it's neat easy to understand someone can easily understand once the moment you see here okay immediately i saw that this is a drawback i know that this two also will be drawback why because now my benefit got over i started with the drawbacks the limitations so later on the later things also will be limitations okay when you're reading also you read any book normal book any textbook anything how, how do they present you do they give you one limitation then the one drawback again limitation again uh, add, sorry benefit limitation benefit limitation or first they give a list of limit benefits and then limitation they give first benefit and then limitation so it's easier for you also to know the pattern the limitations are over sorry benefits are over now limitation starts and whatever recommendation everything later on so follow this and it's a good uh, thing okay start with the benefits first okay start with benefit first always then talk about drawbacks because we always start with we like to start with a positive thing this is a good thing when you read any book normal book only if you read story books or anything the you always uh, you will see that they always start when they have to introduce a concept they always start explaining by definition then they give benefits first and then drawbacks they always start with benefits anyone you see anywhere in the world they will always start by giving benefits first and then they will talk about the drawbacks so yeah but if you want to start it the other way around drawbacks first and then benefits there is no harm okay you will still get the mark i'm not going to say that you are going to lose marks or you are not going to get marks or they are going to cut your marks no but that's the best practice because we have been used to it right that we always uh, deliver the good things first before we tell negative things okay even though that benefit is only one even though that benefit is only one and limitations are five still that's the norm like what do i say okay i mean you understood right so yeah now second i immediately know it's a drawback because first is before this it was a drawback so with regard to refund provision 
the amount utilized now they are talking about the in the reporting period is less than the provision at the start of the year one by one also you can see from here this is in a different paragraph see when they told that this increased from this to this this was in a separate paragraph and when they are talking about utilization this is in an, another paragraph don't put things in one paragraph it becomes very difficult for someone even for you also when you read your own answer always check whether able uh, whether am i able to understand this properly if you can understand others also can understand if you cannot understand don't assume others can under others will understand or they will try to understand they will not do that and whom are you writing this paper for for the examiner okay you make things easy for the examiner examiner will make uh, make your life heaven by giving you the marks that you deserve otherwise you are just throwing away your easy marks okay so yeah utility if you see uh where is the utility yes so here it was 10.2 9.1 it, it 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 fell down okay so what does this suggest is a good thing or a bad it's a good thing or a bad thing first identify that if it's a bad thing okay why so it's a bad thing it's not good this suggests that in the prior year management had overestimated the refund provision because if you overestimate something in the before year only later it will fall down if it falls down means in the prior period you have overestimated the refund provision this information may cause so when you overestimate something what happens this cast o oh, oh, this cast doubt on the management's ability to accurately estimate its provision investors might think that managers are not able to accurate uh, accurately estimate provision they are overestimating or underestimating so it creates a doubt for them doubt for whom for the investor investors will uh, start doubting management's ability to estimate provisions with accuracy and therefore it increases uncertainty also regarding their future cash flow see when you incorrectly estimating something it's not accurate what happens accurately not estimating you become more uncertain right your uncertainty increases about future cash flow that's what it's, it's another second uh, risk okay not accurately estimating uh, over estimating third okay here also you can get some professional mass professional mass usually comes uh, towards the last or at the beginning right mostly towards the end it, uh, you can collect your professional marks one of the professional mark you can collect from here and one because see professional marks they clearly told it depends on the format and the quality of your discussion what are the points that you are bringing in your discussion if you see the professional marks here for the clarity as well as the quality of presentation how clear your presentation is the way you are doing your format that is your format and quality of your the, this thing so make sure that your ending is uh, good okay because ending matters a lot a lot of uh, students they don't pay so much of attention to the ending part you have to pay because your professional marks at least one of the professional mark you will get from here only so further information could be provided okay here now you are not referring to that uh, this disclosure note anymore that this is the benefit this is the risk now you are saying more information so further information could be provided to help users to assess the adequacy of the provision that is made how adequate the provision is made for that you can give more information okay part of the restructuring provision is classified as non current but no information is pr uh, provided about discount rates check this things out okay if you see reorganization part of it is what non current no explanation why it's non current because reorganization usually is supposed to be a current not non current because it will not have forever 
I mean, reorganization does it does not happen very frequently. It's a non-recurring activity. It does not recur so much. Understood? Maybe once in five year, once every ten year, you reorganize. Looking at the speed of the technology and the phase of the development, yes. Now you might have to more often reorganize, but still, it's not so much that you should put it under non-current only. So for that explanation is not given and if you see you need discount rates whenever provision is given discount rate also has to be given but not no nothing no mention about discount rate. So just look for this information if it is not there find out if it's not there write in your answer you can collect the professional marks also like this. Maybe you can get the two out of two also okay you never know don't uh, think you will never get the professional marks it's very difficult to get no it's not at all difficult to get the professional marks it's very easy if you follow the simple uh, rules thumb rules i would say look for the information which is there write about it once it's done look for more information which is not there and then write about that too like in the last paragraph so this is like a summarization you're summarizing everything so now very little information is provided about uncertain about any uncertainties that would impact the measurement of the profession or the assumptions made they didn't give any information regarding assumptions that they have made. First of all, no information. If they have given information but it's very little, that also you can include in your answer. You will get professional marks from here. Okay. This hinders the ability of the user to as they use management estimate. So because of this, these things are not there. Because of this ability, it reduces the ability of the user to assess the adequacy of the management's estimate. Whether it is correct or not, whether it is proper or not, whether whether it is adequate or not, the management's estimate, users will not be able to understand. The investors will not be able to understand because certain things which should be given is not disclosed. So you end it like this. You can end it like this. Always know how to end, where to end. It limits their ability to uh, interpret a company or analyze a company better. You can end like this, a question like this. Okay. Examiner's comment is not given for this. You can go and check the examiner's comment, see in which year this question came, and go to that year. It's there on the ACC website. Everything is there. All the examiner's uh, uh, review, the comments are there. You can go and check. Okay. So that's it. And even we went through the marking scheme also. So make sure that today you will go through IFRS 13 and your IS 37. And also your, uh, what do I say, analysis chapter and you will cover these things. So till then, see you in the next video. Take care.